So today I want to discuss uh, a few things, one being the United States treachery against Israel, which I knew was going to happen in Israel, one of Israel's darkest hours. Of course, the United States of America would commit acts of treachery against the people of Israel, and then I want to go over a little bit of uh, NATO members' double talk when it comes to the war with Russia, and then I want to talk about the Ships of Tarshish. Who is Tarshish? What are the ships of Tarshish? And why Tarshish is going to be the very first target of the two witnesses. When I mean target, I mean target with plagues. Let's go ahead and get started, and I want to play this short video clip. I want you to listen very carefully to it. The guy speaks very fast. Israel says that the United States is attempting to overthrow Netanyahu, with a senior official saying we expect our friends to act to overthrow the terror regime of Hamas, not the elected government of Israel. Now, as far as what triggered this claim, well, it was a CIA and the rest of the intel community's report to Congress that Netanyahu's coalition could be replaced by a more moderate one, with the intel report outlining how weak Netanyahu's government actually is and that they expect large protests demanding his resignation in a new election. And so with this, you have the Israeli officials saying that only Israelis should elect the prime minister and that they aren't a protectorate of the U.S. And notably, this comes after Biden was picked up on a hot mic after the State of the Union saying they will be having a, quote, come to Jesus meeting with Netanyahu, and that his red line that Israel must not cross is invading Rafa, which also Netanyahu rejected, saying that he's going in anyways. And so with that, you have senior U.S. officials telling Axios that if Netanyahu defies the United States, it's going to be a showdown, with Biden now considering conditioning military aid to Israel and will no longer protect Israel at the U.N. if they go in. And all this is the U.S. is airdropping aid and sending over a thousand troops to construct a vast floating harbor to allow more aid into Gaza, seemingly through their own intervention. Israel says that the United States Right. So as you can hear and abundantly see and hear that the United States of America is turning on Israel, stabbing Israel in the back because they don't like uh, their, their prime minister. Instead of doing what is right, they would rather take the opportunity which they see as weakness on the part of Israel to take advantage of them to try to overturn their government, send in supplies to Israel's enemies, and even building a port over in Gaza to send supplies to them, probably guns too, and try to strip Israel naked in front of their enemies. This is what the United States of America now is overtly trying to do. And so, <clears throat> I'm going to play it again, because I want you to understand the magnitude and the gravity of the situation that the United States of America is putting itself into with this uh, strategy. Overthrow Netanyahu. With a senior official saying we expect our friends to act to overthrow the terror regime of Hamas, not the elected government of Israel. Now it's right. So, as you can see, it looks like they are more interested in overthrowing the government of Israel rather than Hamas. Now, I have mentioned many, many times that the government of Israel is merely a vassal of Rome. You can call Rome whatever you want to. That would be Western civilization, which includes the United States of America. It is a vassal of Rome. And so... My question is to the United States of America, what are you going to do when the Moshiach comes to replace your vassal government? What are you going to do when the Moshiach comes to replace Netanyahu? And this Moshiach 
is going to be far, far, far more stern on Israel's enemies than Benjamin Netanyahu. What are you going to do then? As far as what triggered this claim, well, it was a CIA and the rest of the intel community's report to Congress that Netanyahu's coalition could be replaced by a more moderate one, with the intel report outlining... Like I said, you're going to find yourselves dealing with a more conservative government. <clears throat> one that is not a democracy. <clears throat> one that is a monarchy. Monarchy. An absolute monarchy. You guys over there in Washington, D.C., you're playing with fire, is what you're doing. How weak Netanyahu's government actually is, and that they expect a large protest demanding his resignation in a new election. And so with this, you have the Israeli officials saying that only Israelis should elect the Prime Minister and that they aren't a protectorate of the U.S. And notably, this comes after Biden was picked up on a hot mic after the State of the Union saying they will be having a, quote, come to Jesus meeting with Netanyahu. Come to Jesus' meeting with Netanyahu. Watch your mouth, because what's going to end up happening is you folks in Washington are going to have a come to Yehoshua meeting. In Jerusalem. And you're going to have to answer for your misdeeds and your wordplay. I'll get to that in a minute. Netanyahu, and that his red line that Israel must not cross is invading Rafa. Which also so, the United States' red line now is not invading Rafa. Wait until the Moshiach not only invades Rafa, <clears throat> but also Transjordan and Syria and Lebanon. Netanyahu rejected, saying that he's going in anyways. And so with that, you have senior U.S. officials telling Axios that if Netanyahu defies the United States, it's going to be a showdown, with Biden now considering conditioning military aid to Israel and This is how it's going to be. Folks, what you need to understand is this conclusion might end up quicker, being quicker than what you might think. And there's something else in this video I'm going to play a little bit more. We'll no longer protect Israel at the UN. If they we'll no longer protect Israel at the UN. There it is. There it is, folks. And that's the reason why, folks, I believe that the United States of America is first to be on the two witnesses hit list. But there's more things, and, and look, I'll just, just, uh, just for added benefit here, <clears throat> See, the U.S. now is slow walking military aid to Israel. All right? And uh, slowing or withdrawing military support is seen as a way for the U.S. to strong arm Israel and allowing more aid into Gaza. So the United States of America is aiding and abetting. The enemies of Israel. Remember back in the 90s when President George W. Bush concerning 9-11 uh, said either you are with us or you are against us. Well, it's been made abundantly clear that the United States of America is with Israel? No. But against Israel. And this is proof.
We are in a very precarious time right now, an Israeli military source has told the Telegraph, the global perception of the war is impacting heavily upon us and the relationship with the U.S. Well, the U.S. is not your friend, Israel. You have a friend and a brother. His name is Yehoshua, and he's going to come and save you, and then there's not going to be an if. No. There is going to be not an if. But it's going to be when. The influence for the U.S. is somehow to slow down the offensive, something we are very worried about. <clears throat> they are our most important ally, the source said. Most importantly, this is a personal conflict with calls against Bibi Netanyahu at home and abroad impossible for Biden to ignore. Mr. Netanyahu has also stuck to his guns and he will not support a two-state solution and this, folks, is the real reason why they are upset. You see, the followers of Satan, a.k.a. the Christians and the Muslims, they want Israel's enemies to be living with Israel so that Israel, the Israelis, can be butchered and slaughtered at will. As a precondition of not only the U.S. but other key allies such as the UAE, he has also given the green light to more illegal... There is no such thing as Israeli illegal settlements in Judea and Samaria. Those rightly belong to Israel, to the Moshiach of Israel, to the crown prince, to the heir of Israel. <clears throat> All right. So, now we have this. It's a different topic, but I want to get this out of the way real quickly. This is a bunch of double talk by Macron, but it's not just Macron. See, we just, I just showed you the double talk by the United States of America claiming to be Israel's ally, but in fact, Israel's enemy. Some more double talk by Christian nations. Uh, Macron again talks up NATO troops for Ukraine. We cannot allow Russia to win. Even after his first round of comments resulting in significant pushback from among European allies, French President Emmanuel Macron has once again declared that, you, that NATO should not rule out sending troops to Ukraine, which would set the West on a path to direct nuclear armed confrontation in Russia. He said in Thursday interview on French national television that while the situation is perhaps not ripe at the moment to deploy troops there, it remains that all these options are possible. Well, I have received information that uh, troops, NATO troops are already in Ukraine. They are already there. But perhaps more importantly, Macron framed Russia's war in the Ukraine as an existential threat for Europe and said that if the situation should deteriorate, we would be ready to make sure that such that Russia never wins that war. He castigated allies for previously being slow to act two years ago. We said that we would never send tanks. We did. Two years ago, we said we would never send those medium-range missiles. We did. In fact, I showed you in a video that Joe Biden said that sending tanks and missiles to Ukraine it would in fact be World War III. That's what he said. The French leader said, uh, those who say let us not support Ukraine do not make the choice of peace. They make the choice of defeat. And so, Ironically, throughout the first year of the war, Macron was the only Western European leader to hold frequent phone calls with Russia's President Putin in efforts to de-escalate and to get to the negotiating table. Now, but now, Macron has clearly moved into the hawkish camp, which sees military solutions as the only viable way out. We have too many limits on our vocabulary. We are not escalating. We are not in war with Russia, but we cannot allow it to win. So there, this is classic double talk. You see. He 
He continued in this theme in the following, if the war was to spread to Europe, it would be Russia's sole choice and sole responsibility, but for us to decide today to be weak, to decide today we cannot respond, is being easily defeated already, and I don't want to be there, he said. As for NATO boots on the ground, the reality is that there are already the case that some small degree, given the discord of last year, revealed that 97 NATO special operators were in Ukraine, among them 15 French soldiers. The Kremlin has <coughs> of late suggested France has already become a party to the conflict, given the presence of many French mercenaries and volunteers in the, con in the conflict. And there you have it, folks. <coughs> Anyway, so concerning Tarshish, let us first of all find out who Tarshish is. I need to go to um, that uh, Jewish virtual library as well, but I think maybe, maybe there would be enough information here. Tarshish. Um, or Tarsus, which is Greek, occurs in the Hebrew Bible with several uncertain meanings, most frequently as a place, probably a large city or region far across the sea from Phoenicia, which is modern Lebanon, and the land of Israel. Tarshish was said to have exported vast quantities of important metals to Phoenicia and Israel. This is very important to understand because Tarshish, although is a location, but is also references to, to other places and ships in the far, far west. The same place, the same name also occurs in the Akkadian inscriptions of the Assyrian king. Asarhaddon died in 669 BC, BCE, and also of the Phoenician inscription in the Nora Stone around 800 BCE in Sardinia. Its precise location was never commonly known and was eventually lost in antiquity. We can find out today what those locations were. Legends grew up around it over time and that it had its identity as being the subject of scholarly research and commentary for more than 2,000 years. Its importance stems from the part of the fact that Hebrew Bible passages tend to understand Tarshish as a source of King Solomon's great wealth and metals. Now listen carefully, folks. Listen carefully. Those of you who have studied history, you, this will, you will light, light up in your minds right away. Especially silver and also gold. Hmm? Have you ever heard the stories of Dorado? How the Spanish were went, went to the Americas to look for gold and silver. Does that ring a bell? Tin and iron. Okay. And there were settlements in the United States of America before the, um, what are called today the, Amer the uh, Native Americans. Because even they themselves said so. But especially silver. I need to look up where is most of the silver located. I and I don't know the answer to that. Where is the world's most silver mined at? North America, folks. Okay. I didn't know that until I just looked it up. These ten countries as has the highest silver production. Well, I don't I don't know who they are. Oh we've got looky here. 
Mexico is number one. Number three is Peru. South America. Okay. Chile is number four. Wow, folks. The United States is number nine. Hmm? Where do you think Solomon got his silver from? Tarshish is west. Now we'll go to look at gold. Obviously we know the gold is worth more than silver. I don't know the answer here either, so I'm just looking it up. Oh, well, look what we have here. Number one, Nevada gold mines in the United States of America. And, of course, those of you who read American history, you know that there were places loaded with gold. In fact, the state of North Carolina produced all of the gold for the U.S., up until the Civil War. Now, what about tin? So, we can read here That by 2000 BCE, the extraction of tin in Britain, France, and Spain, and Portugal had begun, and tin was traded to the Mediterranean sporadically from all those sources. So clearly, Tarshish includes the, the old port city of. Tarsh, Tarshasos, or whatever you call it, in Spain, Portugal. But it is points west. And Britain was a huge source of tin in those days. So we look down here, it says evidence of direct trade between Europe and Eastern Mediterranean has been demonstrated through the analysis of tin ingots dated from the 13th, 12th centuries BC from the sites in Israel. All right. Turkey and modern day Greece, tin ingots from Israel, for example, have been found to share chemical compositions with the tin from Cornwall and Devon in Great Britain. All right, now we're going to have some context. So I don't think that I need to let's see here. So the ships of Tarshish, okay. According to, the, according to the Jewish Encyclopedia, the biblical phrase, ships of Tarshish, refers not to ships from a particular loco location, but to a class of ships, large vessels for long distance trade. Let's see what we have here. Uh, I don't know if I can pull this up. I can't even see that. can't see that so I've got to back up a little bit here oh this is just oh okay so Jewish virtual library Now, what we're going to look up is Ships of Tarshish. This is a very good um, place to research. Let 
a very good site to research. <sighs> okay. A distant port from where? Silver, iron, tin, lead, ivory, monkeys, and peacocks. Remember, you can get monkeys in South America. Now, I don't know about peacocks. Uh, are peacocks in South America? Let's find out. Where do peacocks come from? Well, they say uh, Syria and India. Are there any peacocks in South America? Probably not. Okay, so these ships then would be long haul ships. Okay. That would take trips also to India. Location of Tarsh is uncertain since the biblical references to it are vague and apparently contradictory. The word may mean a refinery to be smelted. According to Genesis 10 verse 4 and Isaiah 23 verse 1, it must be a Mediterranean port since Tarshish is said to be a son of Yavan, Greece. Some identify it with the mining village in southwestern Spain called Tarsus, or Tar Tarsusus, which was, according to Herodi Herodotus, beyond the pillars of Heracles, and according to, and what does beyond the pillars of Heracles Hur uh, mean? It's probably beyond Europe, is my guess. Okay, deals with the faint traces left by those who first moved from the known world to the unknown and uncharted world. Now, the so what that means is beyond the pillars of Heracles, which would mean beyond the Strait of Gibraltar. Okay. And according to Plinius and Strabo in the Guadalajara Quiver Valley, this is the very probable. Okay? So, we can see that according to, I mean, um, Yonah fleeing from his mission in the east, Nineveh took from the Yaffa port a boat going to Tarshish, which was westward. Now, on the other hand, Solomon had a fleet of Tarshish, whose home port was Ezion Geber in the Red Sea. Some explain the expression fleet of Tarshish as a fleet composed of big and strong ships capable of long voyages. So these would be ships of Tarshish or long voyage ships. But not necessarily to Tarshish. Solomon's fleet went to Ophir as well. But I've got, I've got can't be losing my train of thought here because this is very, very, very important. Now, so the coming rescue of all Israel from north, south, east, and west, the gathering of the elect, with the elect is Israel, no matter what you think, from north, south, east, and west, from the four quarters of the earth, will be by the ships of Tarshish. But also will be coming from Tarshish first. Now we just read, beyond the pillars of Heracles, which means beyond the Strait of Gibraltar. Beyond the known world in those days. 
So keep all this in mind when we are reading. Arise and shine, for your light is come, and the glory of not the Lord. It says, Jehovah, you can see it right there, plain as day, is risen upon you. Darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness to people, but Jehovah will arise upon Zion, and his glory shall seen above it. The Gentiles will come to your light. Why? Because they're all of a sudden the lights are turned off. And because the two witnesses are going to force them to. And the kings to the brightness of your rising, lift up your eyes, look round about. They all gather themselves together. They are coming to you to bring your sons from afar and your daughters will be nursed at your side or supported, supported on your side. To see a stream of people. Your heart will be in awe. And your tents will be enlarged to grow wide because the the murmuring roar, the abundance of the sea, the Mediterranean Sea, the crowd, the Mediterranean Sea shall be not converted, but overthrown. Overthrown. Overturned, overthrown. And the wealth, right there, you see right there, <coughs> Kyle is wealth of the Gentiles will be brought to you. All right. From the Arabian desert, they're going to be coming on camels to bring that wealth. Okay. Their gold and incense and myrrh and all of that. The flocks of guitar will be gathered together to you. And the rams of Nebaoth will serve you to come up with acceptance, to try to be accepted on his altar. Okay? Now it says, fly, to fly as a cloud like doves to their windows. The coastlands wait the ships of Tarshish first. So we know these are long haul ships. This is not talking about Tarshish location yet. But in Isaiah 66, it does talk about Tarshish location. To bring your sons from afar, their silver and their gold with them, unto Shem, Jehovah, Elohim. Not unto the name of the Lord your God. No, to Shem, Jehovah, Elohim, the Kodesh, Kadosh of Israel, and he will glorify you. And the sons of strangers shall build up your walls, and their king shall minister unto you. For in my wrath I smote you, but in my favor I now have mercy upon you. Therefore your gates will be opened continually, and they shall not be shut nor day nor night. That when the armies of the Gentiles invaded... And because of that, their kings will be frog-marched to Jerusalem. They will be brought to Jerusalem for trial. I'm telling you that points west of the Strait of Gibraltar, just wait for it, are going to, the leaders of that crowd are going to be brought and uh, the people 
of Israel are going to be brought from that location first. I will show that to you in just a minute. <sighs> For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Yes, those nations will be utterly wasted. And the sons of those that afflicted you will come bowing down to you. And all of those who despise Jerusalem, they will be bowing themselves at the soles of your feet. Why? Because they falsely accused the Jews of being the synagogue of Satan. That's one reason. And also because they themselves were in fact the synagogue of Satan all along. And they will call you the city of Jehovah, Zion, the Holy One of Israel. Now, in Ezekiel 38, we see that the merchants of Tarshish, that would be the ships of Tarshish, the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions there all these are young nations of Tarshish you see folks with the way that the United States is mistreating Israel and once the United States is now threatening to remove its protection at the UN and what what I tell you, what will the UN do when the United States removes their protection of Israel from the UN? The UN will immediately, immediately order sanctions upon Israel and try to gather up an army to force Israel back to the 67 borders. In fact, this is a guess, but I say, it's a guess, that the nations, the Gentiles, will find unity for a short period of time against Israel. If there's one thing that the Gentile nations would be united about, it would be to be against Israel. And you just heard today that they are planning on removing protection of Israel at the UN. Well, once that is removed, then they are inviting the Moshiach to come to protect Israel, since nobody else is going to. And of course, when the United Nations decides to do what they're going to do, they're going to say, oh, wait a minute. Hold on a minute. What are you doing? This is what happens when you try to manipulate like a whore. That's right, United States of America, you're a, manipula you're a manipulative whore. Just like Rome, just like the rest of Europe. All right. Now we go here in Isaiah sixty six, verse eighteen. Now, you, for this whole chapter, you have to understand this is the rejoicing with Jerusalem. <clears throat> when the monarchy of Jerusalem is instituted. Okay? You see, the whole purpose of having the Jews of Jerusalem in Israel right now is to Cause the Gentiles to come down for judgment, as written in Yoel 3. You can read it in the very first verse. A child can understand it. Why can't you? 
All right? Verse 18, for I know their thoughts and their works. That's the Gentiles. He knows their thoughts and their works that shall come to pass, that I will gather the Gentiles in tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. If you want a more beautiful description of how he's going to do it, then read Yoel 3. This is what it's talking about. It's talking about the Yoel 3 war. And I will set a sign among them, and I will send uh, escapees, fugitives, unto the Gentiles. And what is the first place that comes up? Tarshish. What did we just read? Beyond, unto the west, beyond the pillars of Heracles. Which means beyond civilization in those days. And that means beyond the Strait of Gibraltar. They're going to go there first. And we read, therefore, in Isaiah 60 and verse 9, the ships of Tarshish first will be heading to beyond the pillars of Heracles. That means the United States of America is the two witnesses' first target for plagues. Now, why is that? Why is that? There are 10 million Jews, or close to 10 million Jews here. There are just as many Jews, in fact, some more Jews, here in the United States of America than there is in Israel. Of course the United States of America is going to be first. And concerning Chuck Schumer, you Christians don't be criticizing him. He's going to have to, he'll be, he'll be taken and brought over there too, and he's going to have to answer for his own words. I'll get to that in a minute. You make sure you watch your mouth and don't be speaking things against the Jews. There's one thing that I have noticed about Christianity. It is a abominable bad habit. Even some who think that they are a friend of the Jews, that they are with the Jews 100%, with Israel 100%, out of their mouths comes anti-Jewish material. And they don't see it. And when I point it out to them, they don't understand what I mean. You better watch out. Here's what I mean. Don't be two-faced. Don't be a double talker. And the United States of America is going to find out why you may not be a double talker. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt. We're going to find another scripture, folks. We're going to go to Revelation 3. Don't be lukewarm, folks. What happened? Oh, now I don't have any connection. We will continue with either make the tree good and its fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and hopefully I'll get a connection again. For the tree is known by his fruit, O generation of vipers. Now, of course, that did, that was a generation of vipers. 
But you people of this generation, you Christian, who act like vipers have no reason and no cause to point your finger at the Jews today because your sins are ten times greater than they were at their worst. So if you're going to start bringing up the sins of Israel, why don't you just shut the hell up? How can you be evil, speak good things? Now let me see. I think I got my internet back. All right, here we go. To the message of the congregation of the Ecclesia of Laodicea. I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. To be both or to be neither is unacceptable. And you will be rejected, you Christians. Because you speak out of both sides of your mouth. I would that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. I will vomit you. That's the word vomit. So because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich. I am the greatest country in the world. You keep saying that. When your debt is at a death spiral at... What is it? One trillion every 100 days you cannot see your end coming and increase with goods and have need of nothing and know not that you are wretched and miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Let's go to here again. A righteous man out of the righteous treasure of his heart brings forth righteous things. He speaks correctly. He speaks righteously. A evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart, he brings forth evil things. And why do I say out of his mouth? Because we will find context here, folks, in just a second. But I say unto you, every idle word, there is your context. There is your context. Your words, your very words are going to condemn you or justify you. You want to speak evil against the Jews when your Christian works are ten to maybe even a hundred times worse? than what the Jews were at their worst? You are setting yourself up for judgment. Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give to account, therefore, the day of judgment. And that includes Joe Biden. And that includes Chuck Schumer. I'm not going to level judgment on Chuck Schumer because you see he is going to give an account in the day of judgment for your words you shall be justified and by your words you shall be condemned now those of you who've been hearing my words I have been over and over and over and have been this has been going on for I just figured out when I started talking about this was 30 somewhere between 30 and 33 years ago I think it was 33 years ago it was when I discovered Romans 11 and verse 26 Okay. And those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, maybe you should go to Romans 11 verse 26, uh, chapter 11 verse 26. 
and don't try to water it down by saying yeah, that's not what it means because it is what it means remember by your words you shall be justified and by your words you shall be condemned and this is the context of the whole speech right here either make your tree righteous or his fruit righteous or make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt for a tree is known by his fruit and as that generation was a generation of vipers among the Jews so is this generation among the Gentiles the Christians even worse and why do I say they are worse because they don't want mercy on the Jews. They don't want mercy on Israel. And once again, I will need to go to um, I believe it's Jacob 2. Well, wait a minute, Henry. There is no Jacob 2 in the Bible. Well, actually, there is no James in the Bible. Because that name is Jacob. You need to go look it up. Google will, will show it to you. I think it is in chapter 2. I may have to... I, I want to go ahead and... Um... Read this, my brethren, have not the faith of our Moshiach, not Jesus, but Yehoshua, he has one name and one name only, does not have many names because there's only one name under heaven by which anyone can be saved. X, look it up. The Moshiach with respecter of persons. For there come into your assembly a man of a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there comes also a poor man in filthy raiment, and you have respect to him that wears the bright clothing, and you say unto him, Sit down here in this good place, and say to the poor, Stand over there, or sit under my footstool. That's what you Christians, especially Americans, especially you in the Western Hemisphere, have become. Okay? But that's not the one I'm looking for. So what I want to do is mercy re... All right. It is. It is in that chapter. All right. Verse 13. All right. So speak, then do it. As they shall be judged by the law of liberty, freedom. For Jehovah will have judgment without mercy you see it right there without mercy on those who showed no mercy so the United States of America wants to show no mercy to Israel the Christians want to show no mercy to Israel. Once again, the United States does not want to show any mercy to Israel in their dark hour. They want to withdraw support, military support. They want to withdraw their support at the UN to leave Israel naked.
Well, to the United States of America, what is going to happen to you? What are you going to do when rain is withdrawn from you? Hmm? Revelation 11. You think it won't happen? Oh, it's going to happen, folks. The fugitives in Isaiah 66, remember, right here, I will send fugitives escapees to the Gentiles to Tarshish first. To do what? And it lists all of them. To hear my fame, to see my glory. Does not say that have not heard my fame. It says to hear, you see it right there, it says to hear my fame to see my glory. And how are they going to declare his glory to the Gentiles? And why are they going to declare his glory to the Gentiles? They, the two witnesses, are going to bring all your brethren for an offering to Jehovah out of the Gentiles upon what? Birds. Flying ships. Of Tarshish, that is written right here in. They fly in the cloud as doves to the windows. The coastlands will wait, and the ships of Tarshish first. So, flying ships of Tarshish, which is why you see right here. They will bring all your brethren for an offering unto Jehovah out of the Gentiles upon birds and upon covered wagons. Saab is covered wagons and on mules and swift beasts to my holy mountain. Jerusalem says Jehovah, this is what? The escapees are going to do. They're going to show Jehovah's glory to the Gentiles, to Tarshish first, beyond the pillars of Heracles, Heracles first. So I tell you, people of the United States of America and South America and Canada and Mexico, get ready, because you're going to be first. Right here, I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days. Why? Why? Because for 48 months, or 42 months, 42 months, the Gentiles had tread down the temple and the holy city, Jerusalem. So this is in retaliation. Day for day, hour for hour, month for month. Prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the Elohim of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, he will call fire down from the sky. That's right. Fire proceeds out of the mouth and devours the enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Just like Aaliyah did with the two uh, regiments of 50 and their captains. They have the power to shut the sky that rain not in the days of their prophecy. Hello. And to those who are going down the bunkers,
to get their fresh water supply their fresh water supply is going to be interrupted it will be turned into blood there will be no water here to drink they will have to go to Jerusalem and bring the people of Israel with them I know some of you think you're going to stay here no you're not if you stay here where you are and anywhere else except for the Holy Land, you are going to die. The other places on the earth will not be inhabitable. Okay? And of course, when they are finished bringing all of the people of Israel back to the Holy Land, yes, then the beast, uh, the, the what is left over is going to kill them. And then there is going to be a great plague of the seventh trumpet sound. And then on top of that, all of the other plagues that are coming down with the seven last plagues. There won't be anybody living once the last seventh plague. There won't be anybody living in all those other territories. They'll all be dead. Or, came, or they will come to see the Moshiach for judgment. To find out if, by their words, where is it? Yes, to find out if by their words they are to be justified or by their words they are to be condemned. So, those of you who have a bad habit of um, speaking against the Jews and not even know it, you better, you had better do something about that and do something about it quick. And to everybody, prepare for this day of accountability with your idle words. And I mean everybody. That including that includes Vladimir Putin. That includes Joe Biden. That includes the leaders of Hamas. And that also includes Chuck Schumer. Everybody is going to be held accountable by the words in which they speak.